Welcome to St. Louis, the gateway to the West. I know, I know, I know. We're not actually in St. Louis, but our cameras can see it from here. We are in Granite City, Illinois, for the Enjoy Illinois 300 at Worldwide Technology Raceway. This beautiful mile and a quarter, about to host its third straight year of NASCAR Cup racing. Uh, practice is going to begin right now, and it's not the usual two 20-minute sessions. Because of the rain that's behind us, about half a mile past the backstretch, going to be one 30-minute session for all cars. Then we'll get back on the regular session uh, schedule for qualifying. Ooh. So oh. see all of that off to the right? That's past the backstretch and not very far from it. So that's why they're rolling the cars a little bit early here this morning. So what do we expect out of this place uh, today? Well, it's going to be a it's going to be an interesting practice session because you have to shift twice going into turn one and you have to downshift once into turn three. So drivers are busy and we're close to your home. Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. you got to figure out the grip level in this racetrack, right? Two distinctly different uh, corners of this place. Very tight in one and two, as you talked about, downshifting twice and then three and four wide sweeping corners. Trying to figure out the grip level and navigating this racetrack is very difficult. So now it's probably as good a time as any in the season to bring it up. Downshifting and upshifting on oval tracks. I mean, before this generation car, you never, hardly ever saw this. Maybe Phoenix, but hardly anywhere else. Well, you have five gear choices in, in this particular car, and that has changed everything that you do in this car from a driving standpoint, because you have to shift in order to make the lap time that you need to make. This is a, this is a very unique racetrack. Uh, with with everything that you do from the from the driver standpoint in the shifting side of things so um, well, that's just making one lap right by yourself and then yeah. you see Kyle Larson trying to make a pass on somebody that is where it becomes very difficult um, having to try to go with or not get out of their wake as he's looking to the outside of Gilliland here now he's going to try to cross over very hard and challenging to make a pass at this racetrack long straightaways tight corners There's the, that shift that Kevin's talking about. Good racetrack for Joey Logano. Well, interesting that here we come to St. Louis, and two drivers whose seasons really need a rebound are the two winners here, Joey Logano and Kyle Busch. He's got a million bucks in his pocket. Andrew, <laughs> how can you say that? Rebound, million bucks. All-star million bucks. <laughs> That's right. No points, though. Well, that there's okay. that. And that shift comes up at a, at a really weird spot as you come up off of turn two. It's like right as you get to the wall. So you have to you have to try to steer the car up off of the corner and shift the shift the car before you get to the outside wall because of, of that double downshift in turn one. Here's your other one that we spoke of. Obviously, very good racetrack for Kyle Busch. A lot of restarts at a track like this. Saw it last year and nobody better on restarts than Kyle Busch. Well, let's get down trackside and check with Jamie Little. Good morning, Mike. Yes, I just talked to Phil Surge and the crew chief behind me for Ross Chastain and asked him his game plan. He said, first off, we're watching the weather, the forecast right now. Wanted to wait a couple minutes before they went out on track. So we're going to try to get a long run. This is a different tire. They want to see what the wear looks like. But he also reminded me, it's 8.30 in the morning. It's much cooler than this race is going to be on Sunday. So they'll take what they can in this 30-minute session here. And so far, so good for Ross Chastain. And that uh, forecast for Sunday, Jamie, hot and dry uh, here just east of the Big River. Now, last week's winner, Christopher Bell, there was a nice rebound. Led the most laps. Yep. And yes, the race was rain shortened, but much needed rebound for Christopher Bell and company on the 20 car. That beat up. It was almost what going on two months. And those guys just could not figure out how to close the deal on these races and finally punch their ticket. And he got booed for the first time. He didn't get booed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he, he was standing in victory lane while he got booed. While people were booing when yeah. the race was called. That's right. Yeah. But, I, you know, I think this is, a, this is a very interesting racetrack. You see Denny Hamlin yeah, moving blue. all over the place right there. Um, you want to run up the racetrack in one and two a little bit as you get running, but the fast groove is going to be on the bottom of the racetrack on both ends. See air pressure on his left rear, that tire squatting. Larry, a lot of air pressure, a lot of differences out here. 
Yeah, there is. And you guys were talking about the shifting, and I'm seeing some interesting things going on. For example, the Ford drivers like Logano and Blaney, they're going to third only. You're going to fourth only getting down into turn three. But the Toyota drivers like Reddick, like uh, – Martin Trex Jr., they're going to third at both ends of the racetrack. So they're they're shifting eight times a lap. But to add to something Jamie Little said about the tire, this is the same tire combination we ran at Phoenix earlier in the year. It has a thicker tread gauge. It generates more heat. And a lot of crew chiefs were really anxious to get this practice in to see what the fall off was going to be because last year with that tire combination, there wasn't a lot of fall off even on a long run. Look at the focus in William Byron right there. I don't think he ran a whole lap and never blinked. That's pretty normal. Eyes on the prize. Kids focused. He's another guy, right? We watched Chris Bell win and, and, you know, get that brushed off and, and uh, figure out how to, you know, get back in victory lane. William Byron has the same speed, Chris Bell, almost the same story. Month and a half here and just hasn't been able to close the deal. I think his day's coming. It could be this weekend. Well, the, the the good news with those cars is they have speed. And when you have speed, you can overcome those problems. And I think that's what we saw and heard out of Christopher Bell this week uh, in his interview on Happy Hour is, is the fact that he knew he had speed in his car. And when you have that speed in your car, you can you can overcome a lot of problems. There's another one that's got speed in his car. Yep. Ty Gibbs had a really good race at the 600 in Charlotte last weekend, led some laps. Look good. Set on the pole. His day's coming. That, he's going to be in victory lane. Mark it down. It's going to be this year. One 30-minute practice session for all cars, and we are seven minutes in. Coming into St. Louis, Alex Bowman is on a roll. Five straight top ten finishes. Tops in his career. And Josh Berry, back-to-back -to -back top 10s. Denny Hamlin, four straight top fives. That's his longest streak of the season. Brad Keselowski, four of the last six races, he's finished first or second. Chase Elliott now has the best average finish of all drivers. That's the one that is sneaky. That average finish, Chase Elliott, he is very quietly having a great year. Now a couple of streaks got broken last week. Kyle Busch had seven straight top tens in the Coke 600 and in the rain shortened race did not finish in the top ten and Denny Hamlin had led 17 consecutive races but did not lead last Sunday. Chris Buescher. Here's yeah. his comfortable denture right now. Ride quality sort of bobbing out didn't feel bad. Straight away ride quality is fine. I mean it's not, not upsetting anything. It's just a little darty going through shifts just being feel like on the left rear hard. A lot of communication there out of ride heights, Kevin. Why would you be telling that crew chief about the ride height? Well, you, you want the car to run as low as possible through the corners and, and down the straightaways here, you want the car to basically ride on the ride limiters uh, in the shock. So you got to be able to drive the car down the straightaway and you have to be able to drive it under braking, but you want it as low as possible because of the, this is just a very unique racetrack with the way that you have to uh, set the car up and drive basically. it into corners with the brakes, hard braking and be able to run the car as low as possible. Basically Jamie? telling that crew chief that he's got room. He got room to come down. Jamie, sorry. That's right, Clint, and that's his crew chief right there, Scott Graves. You heard that feedback. That was after just a couple of laps on the track, so they brought it down and they made some big changes to it. And I asked Scott, he said, we just wanted to free it up tight overall is his biggest complaint. Down on the speed sharp, down in 23rd. So they made those changes. Looks like he's happier with it staying out there. But guys, it's been a rough couple of weeks.
has found the confidence with not only himself, but his race team. Rodney Childers has got confidence in him, and the results are showing for it. And this is all in the face of the announcement this week. Uh, joint announcement by Gene Haas and Tony Stewart that their team would shut down after uh, a spectacular run up from 2008 and look at the championships two in the cup series including Kevin's in 2014 and Cole Custer's Xfinity championship. Well it's certainly sad sad for both of us Kevin. Um, was able to share a lot of good memories over there, a lot of good people in that race shop. Um, but unfortunately, their day is, is soon to be over. Now, what does that mean? Again, I said a lot of good people over there, a lot of good race car drivers looking for jobs and everybody um, behind them, the men and women that, that build these race cars, all these, these guys, those charters, they're available, right? Where are the charters going? And will those people follow them? And the only thing we know for sure is the front row motorsports announced that they have acquired a charter uh, and there's a lot of good people over there for the taking yeah. and, and in racing and in anything right anything in business or life it's about the people and there's a lot of good people over there. Watch that foot Clint that that is a that is a next gen style of braking see him push the brake down immediately start to release that brake it's not that that complete release off of the brake pedal and let that car roll. You, you go from brake to throttle to partial throttle. Um, very, very different style than what you and I used to to do in the old style car. I think that's due in, in part. Well, obviously, it's suspension this race car, but it has a lot of tire under it. It has a tremendous amount of grip and enables you to do things that you couldn't get away with in the other car. We're halfway through this combined 30 minute practice session. Two Fords and three Toyotas in the Fast Five. Now this gets more curious. Two races here. These are the only four drivers who finish in the top 10 in both. And they each had a win through the first 14 races last year. But this year, no, hmm. not really yet. Hard, hard to believe, look at the group. Champions, yeah, all of them. Caution is on the speedway and the clock um, at 11 and a half minutes to go in this practice session. Uh, a little pesky shower has come over the racetrack. And there it is. Green is not good. Yellow is worse. Apparently the vortex theory didn't hold up. No, it I, did not. Well, you know, it's early and I'm told I'm told the vortex had a late night last night and bourbon was involved. Let's call Daryl. So qualifying is scheduled to begin at 917 a.m. And the good thing is everybody's had a chance to get out there and practice. Thirty six cars have been on track. So we could turn this over right now uh, for qualifying once time expires in the allotted 30 minutes. If we're not able to qualify, you know, NASCAR has a metric to use to start uh, to determine the starting lineup. Look how tight those lap times are. It's amazing to me. You can go around there, shifting gears, everything that you just spoke of, Kevin, that makes a lap around this place, and those lap times can be that tight. And it'll only get tighter in yeah. qualifying trim if they get a chance. Cup Series has not had a qualifying session canceled since Charlotte in 2023. That's uh, 36 races, a streak that started right here last year. When we come back, we'll catch up with some of the drivers and get their thoughts on this abbreviated practice session. Like that driver right there. Next week, it doesn't get any better than Super Saturday on Fox. First, Phillies, Mets from London followed by the Belmont Stakes live from Saratoga and then in prime time Dodgers Yankees it's all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Here in Granite City Illinois just the threat of the voice of the vortex was enough to get the showers to stop and the tracks open again. Here's some Kyle Larson radio. Now my ex is just really tight I think the track it looks darker than when I was just out there, and uh, yeah, I'm really tight. Exit. Did we hurt entry? Uh, 
I don't really know. You know, I had a couple moments in one, but I'm not sure what that's from, if it's me or, or the car. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I well, love about Kyle Larson. Yeah, I don't know if it's me or the car. I had a couple moments. That means when it when he says moments, usually everybody else would have wrecked. <laughs> and a lot of that is the downshift, right? You, you're, you're trying to get this big arc into turn one. You're trying to downshift twice. There's just a lot going on with with the corner entry here. So you have to be able to kind of diagnose everything that's happening with the car. But he obviously said, I don't know. So it sounds like you. <laughs> All right, Jamie, help yes. me out here. Well, yes, I'm waiting for you to throw the ball to us. Ty Gibbs out of the race car, 27 laps, third on the board. Got a little practice time, jumped out early. What did you take away from it? Yeah, I really cannot hear you at all, so I'm just going to interview myself. My car is pretty good. It's a little tight. Uh, I feel like we've got a good monster energy camera, and it's really loud here. These cars are really loud, so uh, hopefully my ears don't go away, but I'm happy with it. Yes, it is certainly loud down here, but a mixed bag. Some drivers opted to stay on the track to work on their car. Others just switching over to qualifying now. Yeah, well, you have a group of Toyotas down there that are just, we're done. Uh, we're going to we're gonna sit on pit road. You got one, two, three, six of them. Yeah, they're definitely all down there in a row, Kevin. You, you looked up as Jamie was giving that interview, and there you see them, all of those guys, happy with their cars and done, switching over. Larry Mack? Yeah, I want to go back to that radio transmission with Kyle Larson. It kind of reminds me of a year ago with that five car here. They fought that car, fought that car, qualified 22nd. Every trip to pit road, they were making wholesale changes. But at the end of the day, when the checkered flag wave, he finished in the top five, finished fourth. And back to the Toyotas you guys were talking about being done. I like what Ty Gibbs, Tyler Reddick, and Bubba Wallace did. They ran 27, 28, 29 consecutive laps. That's only 15 laps shy of what stage one is tomorrow. And on the tire fall off, it fell off about a second in about 15 laps, but then it kind of stabilized. But remember this, it's supposed to be sunny tomorrow and probably 12 to 15 degrees warmer during that race. Well, Larry, when you say consecutive, look at it. Best consecutive 15, 20, Hamlin, Gibbs, Reddick, top three, all from the Toyota camp. Betters beware. This kid continues to impress. Justin Haley has the 11th fastest lap of this practice session for uh, Rick Ware Racing, the smallest team in cup racing. And uh, you he just continues to get it done. You can't say enough about him. Yep. When things are new, when the challenge is new to the sport, go to a new racetrack, whatever the case may be, look for Justin Haley to shine. And he's done that in the 51 car. He's done that in the college car. And you know, he's just a, a a good kid. And that makes it a lot easier to root for him. And he just figures it out, figures it out every week, uh, no matter the car that he's driving. And I know I'm not, not sure about the gold wheels. I know I know it's not his campaign anymore, but I love it. Hail what is it? Hail yes. <laughs> Carson Hosevar, his fastest lap is just a thousandth of a second slower than Haley's. So another young man that's getting the job done here. Twelfth quickest. I remember his first race right here at this racetrack. Did a good job, made a name for himself, and look, now he's in a full-time ride. That's right. He was in the seven car for Corey LaJoy because Corey LaJoy was in a Hendrick car at this track uh, last year. There's Corey carrying it on board and a foot cam. Vividly remember that. I felt bad. Corey got the opportunity, got it over in that race car, and actually Josevar, he outran him that day. Josevar stepped up to the plate and, and uh, uh, did a good job. And, you know, Corey, it, it wasn't, it, it, the deck was stacked against him. It, the opportunity was there. We all know the race car driver he was, and I felt so bad for him that day. It was wasn't the day that he was looking for and it really wasn't his fault well i think a lot of, a lot of times when you look at those situations you think well i'm going to get in the nine car and i'm going to go fast yeah and that's just not how it works there's a lot of time and effort and a system that is built around whether it's the driver the crew chief the crew members whatever that is it's all built around the guy that's sitting 
in that seat and it's just it's tough to jump in somebody else's car and be able to to make something happen that's a good point i mean literally it was built and designed around a different individual right his likes his his take everything that he likes and you have to get in and adapt to that and just it just wasn't there austin Cindric is sixth on the board for a fast lap of 3275 so uh, the petsky car is just one top 10 finish in the last six races. Not including the all star race of course won by Joey Logano Fords have gotten better. There's no doubt about it. Started Most at Kansas them. Speedway. Started at Kansas Speedway but it wasn't from this Penske camp. It was from the RFK cars now the Penske cars ever since that uh, that payday the million bucks to win on the all star race with Joey Logano. Now these cars have figured it out. Well those Penske drivers are first second and sixth in this practice right now. Jamie. For Legacy Motor Club, Eric Jones, 35th on the board. He's only turned 14 laps and he's come in and out now. This is his fifth time back in his box, really complaining about lack of grip, especially one and two. But as they make these adjustments, his latest feedback was we're taking a good step in the right direction. So just not comfortable trying to get that 43 machine a little bit better. He and his teammate our teammate are 34th and 35th. That's a good point Mike and that's exactly where I was going with that I looked over the pylon as Jamie was giving that report and it's not just him. That is an organizational thing needing some speed out of those cars. Todd Gill in 27th right now while his teammate Michael McDowell is ninth on the board. This is a very finicky racetrack with with the way that the, these times lay out. It's so easy to be off here because if your car doesn't turn to the center of the corner or you have a loose entry or whatever that that little scenario is, it doesn't take much to be off. It's funny you say that and look how it's shaking things up. I mean, we just spoke of the Fords, right? And, and we touched on the Toyotas and the speed that they have, the comfort, the confidence they have in their race cars. Where are the Chevrolets? You have to look to the first Chevrolet is Chastain, which has been quiet this year this far. Look at the Hendrick cars. They're way down the, the charts. Uh, William Byron 17th is the first one with his teammate Elliott behind him in 18th. Um, struggling out of the Chevy camp. Daniel Hemrick 29th in this session. As the red and black flags wave. Ending this 30 minute session combined for both groups A and B. They will be split into A and B groups for qualifying and we'll uh, turn our attention in that direction. Denny Hamlin. Best. <laughs> Chase Garbers leads the San Antonio Brahmas against A.J. McCarron. Here in St. Louis, we're going to the game, boys. I'm going, I have a connection to A.J. McCarron. Takes me back to Talladega. We both have Larry. He was an Alabama guy. One year championship or two. I got me a bit. Look at this. Briscoe practicing pit road, Kevin. And a little bit too much. Yeah, a little too fast. Got and, into the grass. And raining just a little bit. Well, it rained all night, too. Well, you, you, need, you need to know how fast you can go right there because under green flag, you have to use that access road coming onto pit road. So you have to be able to. I, I will there, tell you what, this. Tell me, Clint. It, I know you don't drive yourself, but if you are ever driving through a city, I love this place. I love St. Louis, but it is the most challenging city you'll ever <laughs> go through trying to navigate where in the heck you're going from. Jamie, what do you got? How about Joey Logano? What a difference a week makes practice. Not too happy last week. This time you're top of the board. Fastest five and ten lap average. Take us through a lap here and what your race car was doing, what you liked and maybe what you need better. Yeah, I mean, our, our show Pencil Mustang's definitely got a lot of speed in it. It's uh, it's quick. It's um feels pretty good inside the car and it's, that's always a good feeling right when it drives good and it feels good and you got speed in it um, so for whatever reason this has been one of our better race checks for, for Penske in general the 12 is also pretty fast here and the two look pretty good too so um, hopefully we can capitalize on it today what do you need in qualifying here partic in particular um, <laughs> I mean really honestly the last two times I've as a driver not done a good job qualifying here um, you know getting down into turn one is so tempting to, to really fire it off in there and yeah, you have to to make speed, but it's a fine line. You go a little bit too far and you get loose and you give up a tenth or two pretty quickly. So um, 
It's getting it all without stepping over the edge is, is the challenging part. So hopefully I can do it. Hopefully the third time's a charm in a qualifying department. Good luck with all of that, Joey. And he'll uh, he'll qualify and then he'll go upstairs in the booth and he'll help us call the truck race coming up on Fox. A lot different interview out of Joey Logano than we heard last week. He was not happy, was he? No, not at all. And, you know, I, I, I think that the, the Fords, when they can downshift and do all the things, uh, as we look at the points here with the with the playoff bubble, uh, you see Joe, Joey Logano is 30 out, and that is not what we expect out of that particular team and the champ. This one is the one that has really impressed me. Obviously, Chase Briscoe, 11 points out. He's right on that bubble scenario. Joey Logano, is, it just keeps creeping in on it. But Josh Berry, they're of, hitting on all eight cylinders, and I look for that four car to be in that play of scenario. A lot of Fords in that picture. Mark it down. Yeah. Four car is going to make it. They're turning it around for qualifying. That is coming right up here. I'm of the opinion that NASCAR has to live on both sides of the fence here. I'm of the opinion that, you know, as, as rough and tumble and edgy as NASCAR acts and wants to be in certain departments, you have to be the exact opposite in the other departments. So you have corporate America that you have to keep happy on one side, uh, with the $75,000 fine, we're not going to tolerate that. And on the other side, it's like, hey, this is awesome. We're going to promote it. Oh, it's yeah. the greatest thing that happened to the sport. And it was a great moment for, um, you know, our sport. And it's no different than the NBA. It's no different than the NFL. Uh, they're going to promote it. They're going to fine it. And that's the way that you run professional sports organizations, whether you like it or not. So twice a week, new episodes. You can hear Kevin Harvick talk out of both sides of his mouth at the same time on exactly Happy Hour. what I was going to say. 100,000%. You can't. You got to be edgy on them things, Kevin. They're I not going to drive. You took both sides of the fence. A absolutely. You literally said both sides of the fence. Absolutely. You did it so well. Absolutely. Also called the high road. And it's I'm, not going to drive ratings. I'm, this I'm, is go. This right here is what's going to drive ratings. Well. You, then they're going to find you for it. If, 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 <laughs> if you're NASCAR, you have to you have to appease both uh, both sides of the fence. And, no, um, no, no, no. Clint, I'm going to throw you off the back of my hauler if you don't <laughs> be quiet. Well, and guess what? Our podcast yeah. will sell some t-shirts. That's right. Well, <laughs> see? Yeah. And look, I NASCAR can promote it. They will find you. I've, I've paid all those fines, and there is no right answer to, to this equation. Well, I'm going to say it. Thank you, Kyle Busch. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Nobody knows that Joey Logano won a million bucks. No, they they do not. <laughs> Joey knows. Qualifying coming up. Cup cars ready to qualify at Worldwide Technology Raceway just outside St. Louis. Let's check with Jamie. Our friend Daniel Suarez getting ready for qualifying. The good thing is your teammate Ross Chastain goes out in the first group. So what kinds of things are you watching for, listening for your run? You know, with the technology that we have today, it's incredible all the stuff that we can see. You know, not only on my teammate Rose, but Ross, but uh, both on everyone. You know, we can see, we can scan everyone. We can see the data, you know, on s &T of everyone. So it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, so to be in the second group is a little bit of an advantage when it comes to the balance of the car. If you have a fast car or a slow car, you know, that, that, that's not going to fix it. But uh, at least on the balance, it's going to help a little bit. But overall, you know, everyone in, in the 99 group have done a good job today. I feel like the car actually has pretty good speed in the short run. We have a little bit of work to do in the long run, but uh, we worry about that tonight. So for now, one lap, and I feel like the 99 is pretty good for that. There's some things that are different this time around from a year ago. For one, the weather, but the tire is different as well. Do you feel those balance changes at all just in that short practice session? A little bit, a little bit, Jamie. I think that the biggest thing is definitely the weather. You know, we're like 20 degrees cooler than last time that we're here. The tire is a little bit different as well, the construction of the tire. And one year of developing, you know, one year of developing with these guys is a lot. You know, we have just a little bit more downforce of how these guys are getting smarter every single month. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to be definitely a little bit quicker than last time. Thanks for your time. Good luck in qualifying. Smarter every day, Mike. Yes. Not every month, every day. Right. These guys in the garage, they develop these race cars on a daily basis. Now there's the winning shirt, Weather Club, today. He pushed that weather just outside of this racetrack for yep. us, single-handedly. Without the vortex. Without DW's Vortex. Hmm. 
focused. All eyes on the prize. Yes, sir. Assault focused and Joey Logano, fastest man alive in practice so far. Can he do it? I think these Ford's got a shot at this pole well, today. Well, I, I, I think they'll be good for sure in the first round on sticker tires. Cody Ware will be the first driver to qualify. He's going to make his second start of the season. He started 31st and finished 24th at Talladega. Raced here in 2022. Started 31st, finished uh, 35th. A lot of grip in this racetrack. Grip and rip. Long straightaways, Kevin. You come down that front straightaway looking at turn one. You're staring straight out of wall. Head well, on. And right now you want, to, you want to let the car do the work. And I say that because all the things that they do to the race car to make it run fast, just let the car do the work. Don't overdrive the entry to the corner. That's the part where you don't want to be able to overdrive the entry. Um, there you go. Use your, use your let off markers that you didn't practice and try to make the speed on the exit center out that's a term that we've always used grew up using it right let the car do the work and i sit there and listen to you say that i'm like well, what does that mean that means don't overdrive the car don't overdrive that center the crew chief all right we're going to pick up speed where's that going to be well i can get in the corner a little bit harder i can use a little bit more brake i can get on the gas faster all those things are the disciplinary actions that will bite you in qualifying trend let this car do the work whoa speaking of work Things loose. Zane Smith finished 17th at Gateway in 2022 in his only start here. That was his first ever cup race. There's a downshift once, twice. You know, we, we talk about shifting all the time. And at the end of the day, it, you can hear how fast that shift was right there. It's pretty easy in this car compared to what it used to be. Well, with, with the way that the, the, the sequential shifter works, you just, uh, and especially with the no lift shift, and, and a lot of these guys are probably not letting off the throttle. They just use the rev limiter to, you heard it yeah, Zane to, Smith. to bang that car in, into gear. Uh, Zane ran a 33.42. He Ooh, ran a he's in all the racetrack there. 33.05 in practice, so hard to make lap time right off the bat on sticker tires. Harrison Burton for the Wood Brothers made the second round of qualifying here in 2022, our first trip to this track. It's pretty amazing, you know, again, you, you talk about a no-lift shift and what that, Travis Kelsey finally getting to the game here. <laughs> He's in the wrong city. He's in a lot of cities right now. Harrison, he slowed down a 10th as well from practice. Austin Dillon finished 15th and 31st in the two races here. Best start of the season, fifth at Talladega. So right now, as you see these first cars go, Clint, they're cleaning up the racetrack, picking the rubber up off the racetrack. Uh, you never want to go this early in, in a qualifying session if you're going to have a chance to, to, to be on the pole. But That's everybody on pit road is learning what they need to do, what the lap time needs to be. Everybody so far, uh, let's see, three car, he went faster, uh, 32.89 compared to a 33.13 in practice. First one, right? Yep. Ricky Stenhouse finished 32nd in both races here. Started 12th. Here last year. Say it, Mike. Board on that card. Longtime sponsor. What's on the side, Mike? Oikos? Hey, better you than me. You said it. Well, I was talking about the one on the hood, Kroger, longtime <laughs> sponsor at JTG and everybody. And they do a great job of merchandising that sponsorship yes, among the brands. Kept yeah. that alive for a long time. All right, so Tax this is going to be confusing because the same sponsor is on three of the Stuart Haas cars. Uh, I'm Let sure it's coincident it. with this week's announcement, but here is Ryan Priest. 
who well, finished got 17th in his only start here last summer. The three cars have identical hoods, sides, and deck lids, different color roofs. Yeah, one's black, and then one's white, and I think one's red, right? That's how we're going to decide them. I think this, Yes. you see Priest with the black roof on his. I, I think it was... Don't, that's what it is. Hey, that's how you're going to that, That's the problem. Room. The problem is you're thinking. No, no. They are different, and that's the only thing that's different. The roof? Yeah, the roof. Okay. And the number. Thank gosh we're not at Talladega or Daytona calling that. Fourth for Priest, 33-22. You think these drivers aren't studying, dating, watching every move of these drivers? And I'm preaching to my driver right now. Just do the same thing you did in practice and let the car do the work because a lot of these guys are running slower. All right, our comparison in the lower right will be to the bubble, which right now is Cody Ware, as Carson Hosevar makes his run. As we mentioned, he made his cup debut here last year in the number seven, uh, was running right outside the top 15 when he had uh, brake trouble. Carson has a good race car. He was good in practice, well, fastest. I think uh, it's a good track for him. Got up the racetrack a little bit in three and four. You always remember your first. You know, it was always that way for me. You go back to that first race. Maybe not you, Kevin. That's what it's been like 25, 30 years ago. I, I, I don't remember what I did yesterday, let alone. You, now you start to sound like me. <laughs> Daniel Hemrick, first cup start at Gateway. He's uh, finished top 10 in both truck starts here. Gateway is the former name of uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway. See, another one. That's my case. Means something. You come back I'm sorry, I park. missed that. What, what happened? First racetrack, good racetrack for him. Top tens. It was a good first racetrack for me, too. I won my first uh, Bush Series race here. Won the first. Won the first uh... Not so much for me. This was the first big track that ever came to. I was telling you that before we went on the air. Race late models. Half mile track was the biggest track that I ever went to. I remember pulled on this racetrack thinking, my gosh, we could have built seven racetracks for the asphalt they took on this. <laughs> then it went to Talladega. <laughs> All right, Harrison Burton on the bubble now for Austin Sendrick, who has made the final round of qualifying in both trips here. Finished uh, top 13 in both races. Need to turn around, need some points. Need I, to get some stage points and collect those almighty points if we're going to make the playoffs with Austin Sendrick and company. I'm a two These cars should, should qualify good. Um, and, and, and I really expect them to qualify good in this first round here because these sports, for whatever reason, they qualify good on sticker tires, and then, you know, the cars don't turn as good in the second round, but sticker tires, they have an absolute, uh, you know, good scenario to put themselves in position for the top ten. Yeah, 96 now, points out of the playoff scenario. With the Cindric fastest so far, with the uh, pending weather, if we don't get to the second round, as long as every driver has a chance to qualify in round one, that will determine the starting lineup. And right now, Austin Cindric is fastest. Welcome back to qualifying for the Cup Series. Austin Cindric is fastest of the 12 so far. Daniel Hemrick on the bubble. We're halfway through Group A qualifying. Waiting to send Chris Busher. Larry Mack. Yeah, you know, you heard Daniel Suarez talking to Jamie Little about looking at the SMT data from all the other drivers. And one observation about Austin Cendrick, every driver uses a ton of brake getting into one, not as much getting into three. Austin used a lot of brake getting to both ends, but he got off the brake quick. He used it, he used it hard, but he didn't stay on the brake pedal. That's one thing that kind of separates him right now from those other eight drivers that's been out there yet. Thanks, yeah, Larry. Picked up a tent there, Kevin. I think this track's got more in it as we go. Chris Busher started 27th and finished 12th here last summer. Well, Larry's right. I, this is a heavy braking track right in the initial part of the, the braking zone. You downshift a couple times, so you want to, as we as we get into those foot cams, you want to roll out of the brake as fast as you can. And I think in qualifying you can. You can probably get away with a little bit of roll, but not much. Well, I think that's what you saw. Off of both got pedals. Off of the brakes a little bit there. The car rolled out from underneath them. You saw him lose the speed again, down in three. Losing the speed, getting in. But uh, just like Larry was alluding to, got back to the throttle quick. 
and went back around that ghost car of Daniel Hemrick. And he takes over the fifth spot That's from not, Hemrick. Not a lap that Chris Busch was looking for, though. Car was nervous for sure getting into the corner. Eric Jones had a birthday this week, turned 28. Finished seventh here in 2022, Bob, but struggled in practice earlier. Man, I was, I, I was I'll gonna trade say. him. It was the same day I did. Mine was not 28 years old. What are you, 65? Pretty close. Good lap going for Eric Jones. I forgot your birthday. Starting to uh, got in the corner. You, you see the difference. Look at the ghost car and Chris Buescher. He was loose getting into the corner, lost some speed there, and never was able to, to capture that back. So Jones goes to fourth. Here's one fastest car in practice. Let's see if he can back that up. 3260 in practice, 3262 on his teammate Cindric so far, fastest car. Yeah, this is going to give us a good measuring stick of, of where the racetrack grip is, what the lap time needs to be. Always a good qualifier. Ooh. There it is. How much faster he was able to get to the gas, but he couldn't stay with it on the exit. Had to lift a little bit of the wall. You heard it in the throttle, and look how much momentum that he lost down the back stretch. Not sure what happened on exit there, Paul. Mm, channel two. Second for Logano, 3277. That knocks out Ricky Stenhouse. Moves Eric Jones onto the hot seat for Kyle Busch. All on the exit of two. Kyle won here from the pole last year. He's finished top two in both races at this track. Grip and rip right there. Drove it into the corner. Hard, got that thing rotated and immediately back to the floorboard. Second, 3270. That'll knock out Eric Jones and move Carson Hosevar onto the bubble for Ross Chastain, who made the final round in both races here. Yeah, Ross the boss. Uh, yesterday you would have been jealous. We drank beer out of the the pigtail of the uh, at the brewery yesterday. Yeah, always always an awesome fun. Stop here at St. Yes. Louis. Very jealous of you over the years of having that sponsor. Are you going to have to right. explain that? You drank out of the pigtail? Yes, right out of the right out of the 111,000 gallons of beer in the tank oh, that oh came gosh. fresh before it even. How many gallons? 111. Thousand. That's 100, a lot of good times. And right eleven thousand. Back to the throttle. Very early and hard. Was able to stay with it. Creeping back by him to the start finish line. Fourth for Chastain. Knocks out Hosevar. Yes, sir. Good lap. And, and that will lock Austin Sendrick into the final round. Her man's on the racetrack. Standing up for him. That's what I love about our fans. So loyal. Passionate. Loyal, passionate. <laughs> right down to the bottom of the racetrack, car. That's Great. a very good Great analogy car. of letting the car do the work. This is this is just a place where you you, you talked about it earlier. You got to drive in hard, but you you cannot overdrive the corner. You got to be able to get off the brake and get back to the throttle. And you see it again in three and four. Yeah, as soon as that car rotated, he was able to get right back to the throttle. Still not the lap that I was looking for. I thought this track was going to be faster than this. I think the cars have slowed down. These are all adjustments that everybody on that pit road are looking at. So this guy right here on the pole last weekend, can he make it two in a row? Bowman to fourth, that knocks out uh, Dillon. Puts Chastain on the bubble for Ty Gibbs, who got his first career pole last week in Charlotte. So Kyle Busch is locked in to the final round. And he let the car roll quite a bit, but you see how it turned back down, was able to exit low, kind of dime in the corner. Look at the speed down the back straightaway, momentum. 
These Toyotas were fast. All of them parked on pit road early, happy with their cars in practice. Yeah, and you hear him pick up the throttle just a little bit, get that mid corner speed and be able to put the, the throttle down on the exit. But Look how uh, low he was on the exit. Second for Gibbs. That will knock Chastain out of the fast five. Bowman to the bubble and uh, Kyle Busch is locked in. Christopher Bell. Got a second win of the season last week. And watch this confidence. I promise you confidence is everything in sports. We know that. Watch momentum. The old Mo. It's going to show up right here. We had a great interview with Christopher Bell this week. Talked about getting booed in victory lane for the first time in his whole life. Had to lift at the wall. And pay the price there down the back straightaway. Look at the momentum. Speaking of Mo, lost that momentum down the back stretch. Can he make up for it in three and four? Wow, he sent it in there. Got off that brake, let the car roll. Shows you the speed in a race car. Paid the price off of two, though. He's going to want that one back. Might have another chance at it. And Bell is locked in. Second fastest. Denny Hamlin. Top five finishes in his last four races. So the final spot here is going to be Hamlin or Logano. Hey guys, one thing that separates Austin Sendrick from the other four in the top five, he's the only one that went to third gear down in three and four. Everybody else just went to fourth. That's one thing that's different about Sendrick's lap. All right, Larry, I'm glad that you pointed that out. And every driver, every team has noted that as well. Keep an eye on that for us. Let us know if everybody follows suit as we go. Look at this lap, Kevin. It's a great lap. Top of the board, Denny Hamlin. And Joey Logano will not make the second round of qualifying, earning a spot in the sixth row. So Denny Hamlin is fastest with 32.58. Getting ready for Group B qualifying. Here's Jamie. Well, we're almost one week removed from the chaotic day that was Sunday, and I know the heartbreak of what Sunday was like. Kyle, but what's it been like this week, just kind of decompressing after everything that happened and transpired? Uh, yeah, we had a test on Tuesday, and it was good to get back behind the wheel of this, this car with this team, and um, got to win a sprint car race last night, so hopefully find some speed here for qualifying and make the final round. Winning helps everything, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt it. And I haven't won much. Uh, I haven't won much in the sprint car this year, so it was good to get back to victory lane. Good to see you back. <laughs> I knew that was coming. He's been beat up pretty bad in that sprint car. It has been bothering him. Oh, it's terrible. Got him, got Absolutely him, terrible. Got him a win. <laughs> he, Which, you know, if you know him, probably meant more to him than about anything. <laughs> It's a it's it's a different world that Kyle Larson lives in to, to be able to win all the races and do all the things that he does. He races a ton, but if he's not winning, I mean, it matters to him. And, you know, he took a lot of the lot of the heat last week for, um, you know, the, the sliding of the tire on the pit road and beat himself up pretty bad. But man, that kid's a stud. All right. Derek Kraus was the first driver out in Group B, fifth start of the season. And here is Corey LaJoy. Mashing on that loud pedal. Corey ran the number nine here last year, finished 21st. Pedal never moved in that shift, Kevin. Nope. It's pretty much the norm in the, in the uh, world that we live in today, the no lift shift. So explain that. Yeah, I mean, basically it works off the rev limiter. You'll see see his foot never come off the gas pedal and he it, you know basically you just put a little tension on the on the shift lever and as soon as it gets close to the rev limiter it falls into gear and it, it, it does that because on a normal shift you have to burp the gas a little bit take that tension off the gear enables that thing to come out of gear and slide into the next one that rev limiter does that just takes just enough tension off the gear that it'll slide right into the next noah gregson up next started uh, top five and half of the last four races Finished 33rd here last year and his only start at this track. Feel better that. What do you see right here, Clint? I see these guys gaining momentum, and that's what I appreciate about it. Bad week in Stuart Haas, right? Uh, if we're talking about Stuart Haas, it was a tough week for them. But they're going to get it collected, and they're going to get the speed back in this race car. The 10 car has been on uh, a really good roll. And that four car has as well. And right. I see them both possibly. I see Danica Patrick. 
Yes, for sure. We were a teammate of her, speaking of Stuart Haas, teammate with that green race car and a number 10 on the side of it. Looks a lot like the, the paint scheme uh, that she had with GoDaddy. Yep. But they have struggled. John Hunter Nemechek making his first cup start here. He uh, won here in the Xfinity Series in 2017. Much like his teammate Eric Jones was down the sheet quite a bit in race trim. Let's see if he can find the speed in the single lap run here. It goes a long ways to a better day on Sunday. Starting up front, clean air. Helps all those scenarios, better pit road selection. Just so many things can stack up against you if you don't get a good lap in qualifying. And he'll be fourth of four. You see how much, you could hear how much slower that shift was right there than what Corey LaJoy had with a no lift. He heard him lift out of the gas and bomb, bomb, where LaJoy was just bam, you know, right into gear. Pay no attention to those raindrops on the lens. Here's Ryan Blaney who started top five in both races here and finished top six in both. Larry liked this car right here. Said he had some speeds, candidate for a pole. Let's see what he's got. Tell him, Larry. Well, I'll sell him. Looks like he's pretty good through one and two. A lot of green here, Larry. I'm seeing a lot of green. I'm, watch, I'm watching gear break and throttle right now. <laughs> Looks like he's hitting all three of those pretty well. Uh oh, lost a little bit. He did not go to third there. gear. He stayed in fourth gear. Downshifted the fourth only down there, unlike Cindric. And lost a little bit of speed down there. 3266 puts him on top of the board. Good lap. You were right. And bumping will begin with John Hunter Nemechek on the bubble. Here's Justin Haley. Top 12 in practice. Finished top 20 in his two starts here. He won a truck race here in 2018. Rolled the center with some speed, exited that diamond, got a low exit. When he got to the gas, he stayed with it. Exactly what you're looking for in one and two. Looks pretty moto rad so far. <laughs> Uh-oh. See more raindrops, Mike. Third for Haley. That will bump Nemechek. So we're going to take a break with Ryan Blaney, fastest in Group B so far. Chase Briscoe won the pole here two years ago, finished uh, 14th. Eight top 10 starts this season. Let's see if he can transfer to the second round. First thing I notice is that brake pump. Watch this. Have it. Look how little that steering wheel moves right there. There's a lot of things that dissect through that watching along. Risco is fourth. Jamie? Austin Cedric second fastest in that first group. Everybody talking about shifting here. How can it be a benefit or hinder you at times here? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely awkward, especially when the pace is as high as far as what your choices are. And I think it just depends on car balance, um, kind of where you feel like the power band in your engine strong or not. Um, you know, I, I feel like this is definitely a track where you're going to have to use it and make those decisions sometimes in traffic, you know, split second before the corner. Uh, but uh, otherwise, yeah, really fast today with the overcast conditions. Freightliner Ford Mustang definitely has some speed. Uh, this has been a really great track for, for Team Penske over the last few years, so um, I, I think it's a great opportunity for us to execute. I really, 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 really hope that we get all of qualifying in today so I can start at least in the top 10. So, um, yeah, solid execution so far. They start doing that rain dance. There's a little sprinkle still in the air. That's a great point. Think of the difference <laughs> that will make. Well, and one, one thing that I take out of that conversation that I remember from the Fords, the power band is always highs. 
uh, on a Ford engine compared to a Chevy engine, Toyota engine, and being able to shift put those, puts those guys in a better box as far as the power band of their engine. Always liked RPM. Yes. So Daniel Suarez will not transfer to the final round. Here's Kyle Larson. Finished 12th and 4th here. He has three poles already this season. Chevrolets were not near the top of the board in practice. See what happens here. It's a good lap going. Lost a little bit in three and four. Yeah, he had a, he had a yeah. great one and two. Second for Larson. Bumps Derek Krause, moves Briscoe to the bubble. Remember, Denny Hamlin, 32-58. That first group. Todd Gilliland has two starts here and a best finish of 15th here last June. Finished second here twice in the uh, truck series. Whoa. Oh. Whoa, that's a moment. A lot of things can attribute to that. A downshift, loose into the corner. A lot of well, other things. When you're when you're downshifting once, twice, getting into the corner, that promotes a loose end condition. And you're immediately rolling out of the brake pedal, right? So you use it on the straightaway and you start rolling off of that brake pedal as you go down into the corner to, to transition back to, into the throttle. So this is what proved costly to his run. Yeah, it started. He was loose for a football field. Michael McDowell has uh, two poles this year and finished ninth here last summer. Front row motorsports are losing McDowell, but they're going to expand to three teams next year. This so guy's two seats open. This guy has been a phenomenal qualifier this year, and the speed is there again this week in Gateway. Oof. All right, Chase, you can get out. Yep, top of the board for McDowell, and that bumps Briscoe. That's a lap. I'll tell you how good it is. It's we a, have a new, new track, track record. record. See, Kevin, that, it's, you'll have to. It's just fun to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've heard that a couple times. <laughs> okay. Josh Berry. <laughs> top tens in the last two races. This is his first cup start here. In this race car, right? Yes, for sure. Rodney, one, one of the, the race track. Oh, Hang wow. on. One of the things that Rodney told me when I came to the four car is we're going to qualify a lot better. I thought I was a bad qualifier until Rodney decided that I was going to be a good qualifier and in, <laughs> in the things that he did with the car. Justin Haley on the bubble here. Not a good lap. Yeah, and, and in, in today's world, as we see Bubba Wallace uh, take the green flag, in today's world, you have to qualify good. You have to be able to qualify at the front of the race, uh, at the front of the pack to, to get the race started so that you can get the stage points, so that you can get a good pit stall. There's so many benefits to, to making your weekend good on qualifying day right now. Yeah, there's so many layers that stack up against you. And it, it was a little slip up, right? One little slip up, and it's a difference between, what is he, ninth and, and, you know, making the final round. Bubba Wallace has a truck win here. Five top tens this season. And he is third fastest. That bumps Haley and moves LaJoy onto the bubble. Here is Martin Truex, who finished top ten in both races here. Fifth last summer. And an Xfinity Series win here in 2004. These Gibbs cars are fast. All the Toyotas, for that matter. Well, the good news for, for us, Clint, have to be good. There's only one Bass Pro Shop car in the field <laughs> right. this week. So last week we had three of them. Headquarters right here in the state of Missouri, right down in Springfield. Turex trying to make the final round for the ninth time this season. Flew into Springfield this week. Man, that is Bass pro country the Ozarks hi Corey <laughs> and he will not bump Corey LaJoy by about eight one hundredths of a second so that will lock Michael McDowell into the final round here's Chase Elliott has the best average finish of all drivers in the field finished uh, 21st here two years ago 
He's trying to make the final round for the tenth time this year. Discipline, easy in, hard off. Was discipline getting into the corner, got to the throttle, that hard off I was talking about. And look at the difference. Look at the momentum down the back straightaway. Very disciplined. Same, same thing. Three and four. Did not overdrive the entry. Got the most of the lap on exit. Losing a little bit of speed here right at the line. And LaJoy hangs in there. <laughs> As uh, Elliott misses it by seven and one thousandths of a second. And Corey commentates uh, as we show right. him on camera to be bumped out every time. Tyler Reddick finished top ten in six of the last nine races, including his Talladega win. He has started top ten in both races here. I got bad news for Corey. Yep. Things go easy and planned. I know it. Easy. He's got to piece it together. But these Toyotas, again, very fast in practice. I look for this guy to be able to find it down here in three and four. Stay in that green. Stay in the green. So Blaney is locked sorry, in. Corey. Got bad news for you. Head to Chili's. <laughs> Reddick locks himself into the final round. Man, and that bumps the joy. I could use some chilies right now. All right, two to good go. Stop. Good stop. Brad Keselowski, top two in four of the last six races. Started outside pole at Darlington. You know what you call that, Mike? Bad Brad. He yep. is back. So it is Keselowski and Byron against Wallace and Larson for the final two spots. Gosh, Clint, I look at that. I look at that scoreboard and I have to look twice every time I look at it with as uh, fast as Michael McDowell's lap is. That's three tenths. Well, I this know that I'm close. a long ways away from him, but if you'd have been listening to what I said, he's I'd a never very listen good to you. qualifier. That is a really fast lap. Brad Kozlowski bumps Kyle Larson out of the fast five. As fast as Denny Hamlin was in that first group, he only ran a 58 to McDowell's 31, to your point. And Kozlowski locks in Bubba Wallace. So the final spot is between Kozlowski and William Byron. It's not every day that you're three tenths faster than no. the field. Chevy in this group so far is Larson in sixth. Six one hundreds off of the fast five. Good looking race car this week. And Kozlowski hangs on by three one hundredths of a second to a spot in the final round. Michael McDowell with a new track record is fastest. Round one is in the books. Michael McDowell re, uh, debriefing after setting a new track record in round one of qualifying here. 32.318. Almost three tenths faster than the field, Jamie. Fastest man in St. Louis. Mike Joy just mentioned it. A new track record for you. So, Michael, what made the difference? Because this is by far your best qualifying effort at this track. Yeah, we just had a really fast Sightman Cancer Care Center uh, Ford Mustang. It wasn't really that big of a lap. Just nice and smooth, kind of hit my mark. So, I'm uh, really proud of everybody at Front Row Motorsports, Travis Peterson and the guys. You know, the car was dialed in. So, just got to go out there and hit my marks here, not make any mistakes. But, yeah, it's awesome to have this kind of speed. A big weekend. We're going to have a special member with us tomorrow. I got to spend some time at the uh, the children's uh, hospital yesterday with, with Sightman and um, met some really special friends. So hopefully we can get a poll for them. All right, you're going for your third poll of the season. What, if anything, can you do differently this time? Don't screw it up. Um, you know, but everybody's going to have an opportunity to work on their stuff. Obviously, we hit the balance right. So it's not easy, right? Those guys are going to make improvements, make gains. I just got to go execute just like we did there and see where we stack up. Best of luck. Thank you. Kevin, that's been the challenge with the fours, and you alluded to it earlier, you know, backing that up the second time around on old tires. Yeah, you got to make the car turn in the middle of the corner on hot tires. So we'll see what happens.
five Toyotas in the final round of qualifying here. Let's meet one of those drivers, Jamie. Well, Bubba Wallace making the walk down pit lane. That's a good sign because he's moving on to the second round. So qualifying here has been good for you. Seven in the first two outings the last two years. What do you think? Can you better it? Yeah, um, that's, that's a good to know. Is I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't remember anything about this place last year, or let alone two years ago. So qualifying seventh. I know we've ran okay here. Um, so we put a lot of emphasis into this weekend. Um, we're just a little bit on the tight side. We we made a move from practice qualifying and it wasn't enough. So. Just kind of exposing the car right now in the areas that I need it to be better. Um, but all in all, good weekend here at McDonald's, St. Louis. Had a lot of history here. It's, it's been good. You know, when you guys as racers come to the track, you don't just show up and race. You guys put in the time in a lot of these towns. Yesterday you did something special with your team. What was that? Yeah, we went to uh, the Matthews Dickey Boys and Girls Club right down the road from here and um, was getting it summer prepped. We were hanging up all the pictures, fixing up, hanging TVs, just making it look good for when the kids come through. Uh, through the summer hours so that was a lot of fun getting the guys involved and and um, yeah it's just the small things you do they always add up so it makes you feel good at the end of the day nice job by you you're gonna have the day free you're going back to your bus you're gonna work on some legos is that the deal yeah i got i got a lego set i need to work on i'm not to the extent of willie b but we we share on what we have going on so i got that and i got my my laptop or my my gaming pc on the bus so We'll see. I might just take a nap. I don't know. I like to sleep. So don't sleep. The truck race is coming up, and I have great news, guys. The sun is coming out. All right. Things have changed, Kevin. Uh, William Lagana or oh, look Legos. Is that it? What? That's a Boston Dynamics robot. <laughs> well, of course. It uh, is. You can call it a dog, but well, what else would you call it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That is awesome. Check that out. You need one of those, Clint. I'm I'm speechless. I, I don't I even know. See I don't know where to go after the Legos. Well, the William Byron is, is the Lego building king of the garage area right now, and okay. you know where he got that from? Where? Jeff Gordon. Really? Yes. Also, huge Lego builder. Legos, video games, and naps. The game has changed. And that came from Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Wow. Five Toyotas, four Fords, and Kyle Busch's Chevrolet. In fact, uh, this is the first time all season Hendrick Motorsports has not had a car in the final round of qualifying. Uh oh. All right, Group A will go first. Kyle Busch ready to roll off. That Rebel Bourbon Chevrolet. You know that stuff's 100 proof? Well, I like it. Good. I like being a Rebel, and yep. I like Bourbon. Perfect fit. You're too old to be a Rebel. <laughs> I'm running out of Rebel. <laughs> I love that. Hi, I'm running when out of Rebel. When I can get a short answer out of you, that's that means that Buddy, we're, we're, we're putting your mind to work. That birthday bothered me this week. I saw it online. 65? Wow, that's a number, man. You know how it resonates with you is you remember your dad. Right, I remember when he turned that, and I was like, I thought he was older than dirt, and here I am. Creeping in. Guess this. My son, you know what I got out of cash this week? He texts me happy birthday. Texts me happy birthday. I called him immediately. I said, buddy, Wait a minute. this is, is not And you were home? Go. Text me happy birthday. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, I've been out on the road, oh, and, all right. and he was home. Well, he said, well, I, I meant to call you. I said, <laughs> yeah, busted. All right, Kyle Busch, 32704 in round one. A little sunshine on the track now. Yeah, That'll change the game, Kev. You heard a little bit. You heard a, a lift of the throttle on the exit of turn two. That's going to be what you don't want to do. to 842. So a fall off of 14 one hundredths from round one. Ty Gibbs 32 698 in the first round.
32814. Fall, uh, fall off of 12 one hundredths. Always fun to hear these guys do the work inside the car, the shifting. The, the drivers are so busy at this at this racetrack with all the downshifting, upshifting, the way that you use the brake. It's just a it's a it's a busy lap every time around for the drivers. Christopher Bell was 32 six eight one in round one. We talked to Christopher Bell this week on the uh, podcast and and just to hear him talk Clint well, we, we talk about it all the time just to the the speed that the 20 car has they've had a tough eight weeks but to come back and, and win the Coke 600 uh, fixes it fixes it winning cures all always does he's fastest 32 six eight seven that's a fall off of only six one thousandths so now the question on everybody's mind is wh where's the fall off is it just the tires is it the fact that the sun comes out probably a little bit of both all that goes into the equation christopher bell quick back to the throttle allowed him to just about equal his round one time Austin Sendrick, 32-62, round one. Rolled that middle of the corner very well, was able to stay to the gas, kept the momentum down the backstretch. Can he do the same in three and four? Good art getting in, stays on the bottom lower than Bell. Driving off into the sunset here. Got a ways to go for the sunset, but he's gonna <laughs> do it. 32-577, Austin Sendrick is the first driver to better his first round time, and he does it by about five one hundredths. Good speed in 11 car, Denny Hamlin in the first round. Ran a 58, see what he's got. Yeah, and as the sun comes out, Clint, you wanna be, you wanna go as quick as possible because if the, if the racetrack heats up, the speed is gonna immediately go down. Definitely lost speed and right in the middle of one or two. Rotation and getting back to the throttle. Boy, those Toyotas have good mid corner speed, though. We've seen that all day. Hamlin third, 3272. So that's a fall off of 14 one hundredths. Austin Sendrick betters his round one time and he is fastest after the five drivers from Group A have made their second round pass. Austin Sendrick is fastest for Team Penske after the Group A drivers have made their final round qualifying lap. 32577. Five drivers to go from Group B, beginning with Brad Keselowski, who ran a 32-67 in round one. That time, if he backs it up, would be good for second right now. Hey, guys, Denny Hamlin just choked, told Chris Gabehart, I'm not sure if the sun has made a difference, but the track was substantially different there on that lap versus his lap in the first round. And just like in round one, Austin Sendrick went the third gear, both ends of the racetrack of the five that's qualified so far. He's the only one that's went to third gear in three and four. Well, that's going to be a rhythm thing because you have to have your brake pressure adjusted to the downshift that slows you down into the corner. So it's going to be hard for these guys to adjust to that in turns three and four because they, they really don't know how much brake pressure they need to use with that downshift. But you see the acceleration from Sendrick compared to Keselowski right there with the with the difference in in gear and, and the yeah. way that he's able to accelerate. Rolled the middle well too. Rolled the center of both ends very well. And when he got to the gas, just like you talked about, he was able to stay with it very affirmative. Keselowski eight one hundredths off of his round one time. Here's Bubba Wallace, thirty two sixty six in the first round. And if he backs it up, that would Ooh. be good for second right now. Drove it in there hard, got loose. Watch the penalty he yep. pays. Had to chase it up the racetrack. All the way down the back stretch. Slow to the throttle. These long straightaways, you just continue to pay the price. Full sun on the racetrack now. 
as Wallace completes his lap. Now it's making a difference, in my opinion. This track is drastically changing. Well, 32.77, that's an 11 100s fall off. I think the track is changing a little bit, but I think how far he was, Bubba drove it in the corner. Definitely both ends too. Yeah, had to use more brake, didn't get through the middle of the corner and back to the throttle like Austin. Got too greedy. Ryan Blaney was 32-66 in round one. If somebody knocks Cindric off of this pole, they're going to earn it. This track is definitely heating up. Look at that. He's going to lose grip. That's the center that I was talking about. But Blaney, when he got back to the gas, boy, he sure gripped and ripped through one and two. Let's see if he can hold it in three and four. A lot of sun down on that racetrack. Rolled to center well, just like Cindric compared to the competition. Even better than Cindric, but look at the throttle difference. Here he comes back. Second for Blaney by four one hundredths. He ran a 61. So he was also, like Cindric, five one hundredths faster than his first round time. Stay disciplined in this race car. And Come, that's it. Take that, what it'll give you. This is a racetrack that you can do that, Clint, because you'll see these markers going into turns one and two. There's a three, two, one. You got to have the good markers to do the same thing that you didn't practice, the same thing that you did in the first round. Do not overdrive this car. But you see Tyler Reddick way off into the corner. Easy to do, but he was able to stay to the throttle. Here he comes. Had to lift a little bit at the wall. Yeah. Lost it. And just that, that late to the throttle doesn't pay off down at the end of the straightaway. So that's where Austin Cindric, you see it breaking again. He's going to be late to the throttle on this end because of how deep he got into the corner. Disciplined. Reddick was 32.65 in round one. Here's a 32.70. So a fall off of five one hundredths. One more bullet to dodge. It was a track record holder. Here he comes, Michael McDowell. It's a big one. If he gets the same fall off as everybody else, he would still be on the pole. And just do what you did in the first round, Michael. To stay disciplined. Hit let them the, marks. Let the car do the work. Yes, sir. 32-31 in round one for McDowell, seeking his third pole of the year and third of his career. All of his poles have come this season. You see, he just rolled with speed faster into the corner, through the corner, exit in the corner. It's going to be an all Ford front row, no matter what. Nate, yes, sir. Here he comes. He's going to get it. From a 32-31, Michael McDowell. How about that? Clocks in at 32.46. He falls off 15 hundredths. The he's, biggest fall off of any of the top 10 still wins the pole. These guys have done a phenomenal hey, job of figuring out Saturdays. Man, they're uh, fast. Awesome, Qualifying so speed boys. almost every single week. Great job, guys. Big day. Jamie. And great starting spot for Austin Sindrick, who ties his best start starting on the front row for the second time. What was that like? I know you thought they were all going to pass you as they did on the entry, but at the end, you had to wait for the final 34 car. Yeah, I know I got some really good exits, which makes watching that really, really frustrating because, you know, they're all going to pass you on entry. It's just whether or not you, you got enough. But uh, yeah, obviously, the 34 guys did a great job. Michael definitely put, a, put two really great laps together and felt like I got it all on, on our end. So. I felt like I left a little bit on the table the first round, so good to good to gain on the second. So uh, yeah, trail under four Mustangs fast, but uh, stick with front row for now. This has been a good place for you. Run top 11 both races here. How beneficial is it to start up front where you are and get that pit selection? It's important as long as I don't speed on pit road. Uh, that, that's a critical critical aspect of this. At least my race last year. So execution super important. You know, tire strategy where the cautions fall are going to be super important for tomorrow. But uh, obviously the uh, Penske cars are fast and proud of the work the guys have done. Just got to go and have a good day tomorrow. Well done, Mike. Well, it took Michael McDowell almost 470 career starts to win his first pole, and now he's got three of them in quick succession. Larry tells us that both McDowell and Sindrick went to third gear at both ends of the racetrack, the only two drivers in the top ten to do so. Jamie. And how about that? Michael McDowell said he nailed it in that first round. You didn't mess it up, obviously. You get the third pole of the season. How was it from your perspective? I was close to messing it up. I had a little moment there in turn three. Got just a little bit loose and had to catch it. Uh, but luckily, was able to recover quickly and, and get back in the throttle. I'm just so proud of everybody at Front Row Motorsports. I mean, I know this is our third pole of the year, uh, but to do it at a short track, a flat track, not a super speedway, really proud of everybody. We got Siteman Cancer Center on the car this weekend, first time for them. So 
Excited to start from the pole tomorrow. Um, really proud of everybody. It's a, it's a cool team effort here. I know pit road can be treacherous. I know track position is key. So how important is this for you guys to have that number one spot tomorrow? Oh, it's huge here because, you know, they've widened pit road here a few feet, but we've seen it where it's just really critical to get off pit road here. And um, it's tight, especially as guys do two tires, four tires. So having that first stall and being able to launch from your box and, and have a clean shot out will be a big deal tomorrow. Um, but right now we're going to celebrate today. We'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow morning, but uh, really proud of everybody. It's a, a great effort and all of our partners, Horizon Hobby and Love's Travel Stop. And, um, you know, we got great partners. It's a great race team. Big news for Front Row, getting a third charter this week, too. So there's a lot of great momentum happening. And we need a win. We need a win to get into the playoffs. So we're going to fight hard for it. Love the excitement. Enjoy the celebration. Mike. Michael McDowell's previous best start here was 17th. What a difference a year makes. We'll be back to wrap things up from Worldwide Technology Raceway, where Ford has swept the front row for tomorrow's Enjoy Illinois 300. Welcome back. Sunshine on the racetrack. Uh, good news for X What's coming up next, which is the uh, truck race a little later on here. Michael McDowell has won the Bush Light Pole. Austin Sindrick second, Ryan Blaney third. Ford sweeps the first three spots. Uh, Toyota the next three. The only Chevrolet in the top 10, Kyle Busch, in row five. Best of the rest, Byron and Logano, Larson and Bowman. It's going to be interesting, Mike, to see if those Chevrolets can make their way towards the front. Uh, we, we talked about those Fords uh, being in in the first three positions right there. I feel like this is in their wheelhouse as far as the, the way that you shift and the RPM range. So we'll see what happens tomorrow with the handling of the cars as we go through these runs. Glad you said that, the Chevrolets, where are they at? Not much speed today, but you know when the time's right, the pay window opens and boys will be back up front. Not so fast this day. That guy right there, impressive lap. Extremely fast track record. You just don't hear that much anymore. No. Nope. Now, uh, Michael mentioned pit road. Uh, the pit stall, uh, the pit road is wider here uh, this year because an Armco barrier out against the uh, pit wall that separates the racetrack from pit road has been removed. This was very narrow. Not anymore. Now you can see that guardrail right there. It's gone, widening that thing out. I don't love that, Kevin. I well, like when there are challenges in a racetrack, keep them that.